Hello there students, welcome back to this video series. This is your instructor Dhruvi Bhatt and today we would be talking about elasticity of demand. More specifically, price elasticity of demand. Okay students, before we move forward and talk about elasticity of demand, I will just like to refresh a little bit about law of demand. If you remember, the law of demand says that as price of any commodity increases, its quantity demanded decreases. I am forgetting an important word here, right? Citrus paribus, as price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. This law of demand shows us the direction of demand. It shows that it negatively reacts to the price. It shows us that how the demand reacts. But there is one thing which it doesn't tell us. Which is by how much the demand changes. By how much the quantity demanded decreases. Does it affect similarly in case of each and every product? Then there would be no one purchasing a Rolls Royce or no one purchasing a BMW. Obviously, it is a very high priced commodity and its demand must be very less. But still, that's not the case. There are many people who buy it. Why is the case where iPhones are still sold when you have an option of lower priced goods like Chinese phones? Oh. Why if price is high, the demand, demand is, is not, not decreasing? decreasing? That is the question by how much the variation happens is given to us by elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand shows to us the responsiveness. It is the measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded or quantity supplied to one of its determinants. It is the measure of how demand or supply responds to its determinants. We talked about the determinants of demand as well as determinants of supply. If you remember one of the important determinants, the first and foremost one is price. So today we would be talking in greater detail about price elasticity of demand. First, price elasticity of demand is the measure of responsiveness of quantity demanded with respect to price of a particular commodity. The definition says that price elasticity of demand measures how much the quantity demanded responds to the change in price of that particular commodity. Let us see that how different products react to change in prices. Okay. Let us first talk about ice creams. As price of ice cream increases, its quantity demanded decreases. Is the but case similar in case of water? If price of water increases, what happens to its quantity demanded? That's a question. Say for example, you are getting a free water supply at your home. But your society thinks that it will charge you for the water supply, it starts charging you 3500 rupees per month for water supply, otherwise they will stop the water supply at your home. Will you stop using water? Answer is obviously no. If the price significantly increases of such a commodity which is a necessity, pani ka kaam to pani hi karta hai, of such a commodity which is a necessity then its quantity demanded cannot be changed significantly. What is such demand known as? Demand is said to be inelastic. Inelastic cannot be changed with change in price. Demand is said to be inelastic if the quantity demanded responds only slightly to the change in price. Demand is said to be inelastic if quantity demanded changes in smaller proportion even with a wide range of change in price. 
The price of water increased in a very high proportion, but still its demand did not change by much. So water is inelastic. Leave some of the example of inelastic goods in comment section below. Moving forward, let us take the example of air conditioners. As opposed to water, if price of air conditioners increases to a huge lot, what happens to its quantity demanded? Students, obviously the quantity demanded will change in a significant proportion. You will find alternatives for air conditioners. The price of petrol increased. You found an alternative. We have electric cars. We have electric vehicles running all over Ahmedabad even right now. So, if such kinds of goods which do have substitutes increase their prices, then there would be a significant decrease in their demand. People will find alternatives, people will be okay with using fans or they will be using air coolers or they will find other alternatives. Soon there would be new inventions which are cheaper compared to air conditioners. But the demand will vary significantly. Such goods are said to have elastic demand. Demand for a good is said to be elastic if quantity demanded responds significantly to change in price. Even with a small change in price, if the demand changes in very high proportion, the demand is said to be elastic demand. Also leave some of the examples of goods having elastic demands in the comment section. Moving forward, let us try to know the determinants of price elasticity of demand. Ma'am, you told us to write the examples below here, but how to determine whether the product is elastic or inelastic? I am there to help you. Let us check some of the causes or some of the determinants which make a product elastic or inelastic. The first and foremost determinant here is availability of closed substitutes. Substitutes are the products which can be used instead of each other. As the number of substitutes increases, the elasticity also increases. As the number of substitutes increases, the elasticity also increases. Say for example, we have a commodity car which is used for transportation. Here if the price of cars increases, then there is a possibility that you might skip purchasing a car and you will be using public transport. Otherwise you can use your own two-wheeler which is comparatively cheaper and comparatively affordable. Because transportation has many substitutes, I want a car for moving from one place to another. As there are many other options available for doing this similar task, the elasticity is high. The elasticity of products having many substitutes is high. On the other hand, the elasticity of products having no substitutes, the products which cannot be replaced by other products is comparatively low. Say for example, the elasticity of eggs. Those who want eggs for breakfast, obviously it is an irreplaceable commodity. That is why it is very difficult to replace eggs. Even if its price increases, its demand will not be significantly impacted and because it has less substitutes, its elasticity is also less. Moving forward to the second determinant which is necessities versus luxuries. Obviously, necessities would be very less elastic. The higher the necessity, the less the elasticity. For example, all the necessary goods like food, water, shelter, health, medicines and even internet nowadays, all these are inelastic. But on the other hand, luxuries are elastic. The higher the luxury, the higher the elasticity. For example, smart watches, smartphones, 
all the smart gadgets which we own nowadays are elastic if their price increases people will find for its substitutes i have a substitute for an i watch a non branded watch a chinese watch i am happy showcasing those showcasing that too to my friends so if the luxuries are highly priced then its elasticity would be high moving forward the elasticity is also dependent on the definition of market if you give a broad definition of the market then the elasticity is very low say for example if i talk about a category food the elasticity of word food is very less because it inculcates the entire market everything is food egg ice cream chocolate or bun bread everything is food food is inelastic because it is a necessity on the other hand if i narrow down the definition then the elasticity would increase say for example if i talk about a particular food product ice cream then compared to food its elasticity is higher because i have alternatives to ice cream i have frozen yogurt i have other desserts which i can go for so compared to food elasticity is higher in ice cream within this market if i talk about one particular ice cream which is a stick candy then its elasticity is still higher so as we go on deeper inside the market or as we go on narrowing the definition of market the elasticity increases the broad markets are inelastic the narrower markets are elastic moving forward to the last determinant of elasticity which is time horizon as time increases obviously the elasticity increases because as time increases you find alternatives we found electric vehicles we would soon find vehicles which would be which would be driven using nothing but water we find alternatives to the things which are non substitutable we find substitutes as time goes did you ever imagine that education will be replaced by online videos a board and a classroom replaced by nothing but a small smartphone isn't it worth giving a thought as time increases elasticity does increase doesn't it ending on that note thank you so much for listening to me this is dhruvi but signing off until next time bye bye